Hi guys! Today I'm going to walk you through the mutations worksheet. So if you're in the packet, it is this page and the back, which are pages 22 and 23 of your packet. Okay, so with mutations, we're going to talk about the different types of mutations and then how to identify them if you have multiple DNA sequences. So that's what part one is about, is figuring out what's the mutation when you're just given the original DNA sequence and then whatever the new DNA sequence is. So here's our original DNA sequence. We have TAC, GCC, AGT, and GGT. I put these in between every three bases, every codon, because it's just easier for me to read. You don't have to do that, but I do think this is a good option. So, in order to make your mRNA, you've just got to figure out what pairs. So, remember, A pairs with T, except if it's RNA, it's going to be U for uracil, and then G pairs with C. So, T pairs with A, A pairs with T, but this is mRNA, so this is a U. C pairs with G, G pairs with C, and you keep doing this. U, C, A, C. So this is your mRNA sequence. Once you've done this, you need to use your codon chart to figure out what the amino acid sequence is. And the amino acid sequence for this is MET, so methionine, arginine. So this codon gives you methionine, this codon gives you arginine, this codon gives you serine, and this codon gives you proline. So there's four codons, meaning that we started with 12 bases. We're good to go. We did start with 12 bases in our DNA. We made our mRNA, then used this mRNA to find our amino acids. So this right here is our original sequence. If we go down, the DNA sequence is, the mutated one, is TAC, so that doesn't change. C, C, A, oh, okay. I'm going to write it out, and then I'm going to show you a really easy way to figure out if you have a frame shift mutation, which is super easy to do. Okay, so we have TAC. It's hard for me to read these. They're so small. Oh my goodness. CCC. AGT, GGT. Okay. AGT, GGT. So this is the mutated sequence. If you remember our DNA had a G right here, this one has a C. So let's figure out if it changes anything. Our mRNA sequence is going to be A. U, G, 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 U, C, A, C, C, A. A, U, G gives you methionine. G, G, G gives you glycine. U, C, A, serine. And then C, C, A is proline. So the only thing it did was change this one amino acid. So number one, it's a point mutation. And you know that because only one base was changed. So in our original DNA sequence, this was a G. Then in the mutated DNA sequence, it's a C. Move this up so you can see. Changing that G to a C then changed our amino acid from arginine to glycine. So this is a point mutation, specifically a missense mutation, because we do have an amino acid that was changed. So the three-point mutations, you have nonsense, which is when a stop codon is created. This wasn't a stop codon, it's just a normal amino acid, so it's not that one. Um, silent would mean the amino acid didn't change. It changed here, so it's not that one. Missense would mean only one amino acid changed, and that's what we see. So this was a point mutation, specifically a missense mutation. Okay, and then we'll do the last one. If you write your bases out in every three, it's going to be very easy to see if you have a frame shift mutation because you'll quickly see have you lost a base or have you added a base. If you see an extra base or one less base than you should have, that tells you that a frame shift mutation has happened, meaning that one was deleted or one was inserted. Our last DNA sequence is TAC. 
CCA, GT, GTG, GT. Okay, if you write them out in threes, you can obviously see we're missing a base. So we know that this right here is a frame shift mutation. It's a deletion. We have deleted a base. If you look back at the original sequence, we know that we actually deleted the G that goes right here. So we took that base out. Therefore, this is a deletion and it's a frame shift mutation. So when you make your mRNA, C pairs with A, U, G, 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 U, C, A, C, C, A. A, U, G still codes for methionine, so that one didn't change. G, G, U codes for glycine. C, A, C codes for histidine. And this one doesn't even code for anything because it's just two bases. So... This is definitely a frame shift because this amino acid changed, this amino acid changed, and we're missing a whole amino acid over here. So a frame shift mutation is called a frame shift mutation because it changes the reading frame. What that means is wherever it happens, wherever you have that deletion or insertion, everything after that is changed, and that actually is the case. So we had a G right here. We deleted it. If you look, it's changed every amino acid after that. Same thing with insertions. That's why we call them frame shift mutations. Okay. Part two, those are the chromosomal mutations. There are four types. You only need to know about the three we talked about in the notes. Okay, so if we look at A, we go from A, B, C, D, E, F to A, C, D, E, F. So that whole segment B was deleted. That's a deletion. Now, this is a chromosomal mutation, meaning that B is not a single gene. B is hundreds of genes. So these are really, really bad. So A is a deletion. B, we go from A, B, C, D, E, F to A, B, B, C, D, E, F. So that's what we call a duplication. You can also call it an insertion. And you know that that whole segment B was what was duplicated. So hundreds of genes being duplicated, okay? C, you go from A, B, C, D, E, F, it folds on itself, and we have A, E, D, C, B, F. That's inversion. So you can think of inversion being kind of like a pretzel. You're taking the chromosome, and then it like switches on itself, so the, the genes are in a different order. That's called inverting on itself. And then lastly, we have two different chromosomes, and they cross over when they're not supposed to. That's what we call translocation. So translocation is when you have like chromosome 1 and chromosome 5 and for some reason they switch their genes. That's really bad. Not supposed to happen ever. And um, that's translocation. Okay, so that's this, this side. We're going to go over here. For numbers 1 through 5, choose the following terms. So 1 I kind of modified on mine because I don't really like what it gives you. So the three types of point mutations we're going to say are silent, missense, and nonsense. So silent is when the amino acid isn't changed. Missense is when one amino acid is changed. And then nonsense, remember, stop that nonsense, is when a stop codon is created. I know those aren't in the bank, but I like them better. Two, four types of chromosomal mutations. Okay, so insertion, when you're adding... Now you're inserting or copying multiple genes. Again, it's like hundreds of genes that you're doing with chromosomal mutations. That's why they're so bad. Insertions, you can have deletions where part of a chromosome is deleted. Inversion, which is when they switch the order on the same chromosome. So you go from A, B, C, D, E, F to like reverse maybe. And then translocation involves two chromosomes and they cross over, but they're not supposed to. Um, three, what mutations would be considered frame shift, insertion, and deletion? If you insert a base or if you delete a base, it's going to change every codon after that point. That's why they're called frame shift mutations, because it shifts the frame of reading. Four, which mutation involves two chromosomes? Translocation. Five, can a point mutation be a frame shift mutation? We are going to say no. We're going to say that a point mutation is missense, silent, nonsense, and we're not going to call it frame shift, like insertion or deletion. Okay. 
Um, number one, a mutation that involves one or a few nucleotides. That one is going to be F, point mutation. Just involves one single nucleotide. So if you change a base, that's a point mutation. Two, involves the loss of all or part of a chromosome or one base. That's going to be A, deletion. If you're deleting something, you're removing it. Three, produces extra copies or parts of a chromosome or base, that's going to be C, insertion. So you're inserting or adding a base in or a part of a chromosome in. D, or ooh, four, reverses the direction of parts of chromosomes, that's D, inversion. Think of it like a pretzel, same chromosome, you're just switching the order of the genes. Five, occurs when part of one chromosome breaks off and attaches to another. That would be H, translocation. So translocation is the only one of these that involves two different chromosomes. Six affects the DNA sequence of, we're going to say, a gene. That would be B, frame shift mutation. Seven, a substance that can change the chemical nature of DNA. That's what we call a mutagen. One type of mutagen would be a carcinogen. It's just a mutagen that causes cancer. That's the ones you're mostly familiar with. That's going to be tobacco. UV rays, radiation, x-rays, all that good stuff. Eight, one base is exchanged for another. That is what we call a substitution, a substitution. For numbers nine and 10, choose the following terms. Again, mark every three letters because it's really easy to see if you have a deletion or insertion when that happens. So nine, if you mark every three letters, you see that you're missing a base. Off the bat, you know it's a deletion because you're missing a whole base. 10, same amount of letters initially and final. So you didn't have an insertion or deletion. Then you gotta go through and figure out, okay, what was changed? The thing that was changed was the third G on the right. It was GGT and it got mutated to GGG. So that would be called a point mutation B. For the back, do your best. You should already know how to take DNA, make the mRNA, and then give me the amino acid. Just keep doing that, and then remember to count your bases. So do a line after three bases so you can see, okay, something was deleted, something was inserted. Those are easy ways to see frame shift mutations. If you don't have a change in the number of bases, that's going to tell you it's a point mutation. So it may be missense. If it changes one amino acid, if it's nonsense, it's going to create a stop codon. And then if it's silent, it doesn't change the amino acid at all. Okay. Have a good day. Miss you guys. Love you.